Hi, this is John Koniak. Welcome to the first in a series of your path to financial success. Today, we're going to talk about building your wealth on the road to financial independence. Uh, my name is Johnny Koniak. I am LMU class of 89. Um, quick bio on me. After uh, graduating from LMU, I went to work for Accenture. I uh, got my MBA from Stanford and then spent a career in equity research, high tech. And now I am a partner at a wealth management firm and we serve as the personal CFO to alter high net worth clients. So we're going to talk about wealth, creating and building wealth, and what the key to having wealth is and setting some financial goals. So Sports Illustrated once estimated that 78% of NFL players are either bankrupt or under financial stress within two years after retirement. And 60% of NBA players are broke within five years of leaving the sport. Are these athletes that earn millions of dollars wealthy? Well, <clears throat> in this workshop, we're gonna talk about wealth how to get it and how to keep it. So first of all, what is wealth? Wealth in its most basic form is the value of your assets. It's what you own minus any debts that you have. For example, if you own a $600,000 condominium, chances are you took out a loan to buy that condo. If you borrowed $400,000 to buy it, then your wealth or your ownership stake in the house or the condo is worth $200,000. So over time, as you continue to make your mortgage payments, your ownership stake goes up and your wealth increases. Meanwhile, you may also be accumulating other assets that have value, a portfolio of stocks, a retirement account, a diamond ring if a wedding's in your near future. So these are the things that make up your wealth. So in the dictionary, wealth is defined by an abundance of valuable possessions or money. So an abundance means having more than what you need. So wealth is not an absolute value. Instead, wealth is a relative value. Wealth is relative to what you need or what you use. If you make $10,000 but only need and spend $8,000, you are by definition wealthy. You may have heard about the millionaire next door. This is the stereotype of this is an older couple. They worked an average job all their lives and lived in a modest house. Then when they pass away, people come to learn that they had millions of dollars. And that's because they saved their money over time. They invested it and it continued to grow for them. So the athletes that we talked about may have made millions of dollars in their sports career. So how could they not be wealthy? Well, there's many reasons for this. First of all, they probably lacked good financial knowledge or competent guidance. They spent money beyond their means. Yes, at some point, they were spending more money than they had. They also had a false perception that, that the money that they were making would continue indefinitely. They built a lavish lifestyle, and when their sports careers ended, their poor spending habits continued. Now, that's a recipe for financial ruin. So the key to building wealth, this is the key, is to live below your means. This means that you should have money left over every month. If you are living paycheck to paycheck just to meet your bills, you are not building wealth and you need to ratchet down your spending. Now this is easier said than done, but if you start out your career living below your means, you'll know nothing different. So it should be easier for college students to do this as you tend to not have a lot of expenses while you're in college. So this means when you graduate, you get that nice job, good signing bonus. Don't go rent a place on Manhattan Beach or buy a new Tesla if it's gonna mean that you're living month to month, paycheck to paycheck. So let's talk about the time value of money. So a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. So if you have a dollar today, you can invest it and you can generate a return. So this makes your dollar more valuable today. So if you do not invest it, let's just say you hold on to that dollar. 
that dollar will actually lose its value due to inflation. So inflation is a general notion that prices go up over time. We all hear stories from our parents about how it used to cost $2 to go to the movies. Our candy bar used to be 25 cents. So those rising costs are a result of inflation. However, if you can invest your money and generate a return that is greater than inflation, your wealth will continue to grow. We just wanna introduce this concept. It's a complicated one, but we wanna introduce it to you because it becomes important as you plan for your future and you determine how much money you may need in the future. So how are we gonna get there? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> let's set some financial goals. Uh, your path to becoming wealthy is best planned out. It's not likely to happen by happenstance. You're much likelier to achieve wealth if you set goals for yourself to be wealthy. And a good way to set goals is to make your goals smart. So what is a smart goal? First of all, it is specific. It can be a certain amount or a percentage. I want to save 20% of whatever I make. I want to have $100,000 saved up by the time I'm 24. It needs to be measurable. So not something pie in the sky, I want to be rich. That's not measurable. You know, get specific and get measurable. It also needs to be attainable. Um, so if you are setting a goal to have a million dollars by the time you're 23, you better have a pretty good plan to get there or it's likely not attainable. So it should also be realistic. This goes hand in hand with being attainable. And finally, it should be time specific. So you've heard all these, by the time I am age X, by the time I'm 25, by the time I'm 30, by the time I'm 40, you wanna have very specific, time specific frames around these goals. So like all goals, writing them down improves your chance of achieving them. Why? Because you're going to see them on a regular basis. Uh, you're committing to it. And when you commit to it, you're more likely to follow through. So wealth is great, but what does wealth do for us? Well, ultimately, we want to have enough wealth where we can achieve financial independence. Financial independence is the financial ability to live the life that you want to live. Now, it's a goal that may take a good chunk of your life to reach. If you're disciplined, you can and you will reach this goal. Financial independence is basically where you are financially secure for the rest of your life. You don't need to work anymore. So the wealth that you have accumulated over time is enough to sustain your lifestyle. You're able to live that life that you wanna live without fear of running out of money. It sounds like a great goal to have and I think we all wanna get there. You do have a modest lifestyle financial independence may come sooner for you than for others. Some people might want to retire at 50, some people at 60, some people may go 65, even 70. Some may continue to work because they enjoy it, others continue to work because they need to. So financial independence is a great goal to have. So in summary, wealth, is defined as the accumulation of assets that can be that can be converted to cash. Wealth is an abundance of your valuable possessions or money. And an abundance means having more than what you need. So building up your resources is up to you and the smart goals that you set for yourself. The best way to build up your wealth is to live below your means. Once again, the best way to build up your wealth is to live below your means. This means that you should be saving money every month. The more you save while you're younger, the longer those assets will have to grow and will get you to financial independence sooner. So the decisions are up to you. What kind of life do you want to live? Do you want to be wealthy? Are you willing to make sacrifices? And what are you willing to do to achieve financial independence? Thanks for joining the session.